Be it the toy line and or show, it's rare that an Ultra Magnus isn't a redeco slash retool of an Optimus Prime. Car robots and Energon come to mind. Animated takes things a step further by having Magnus surpass Prime in authority as head of the Cybertron Elite Guard and overall supreme commander of the Autobots. Upon the Elite Guard's arrival on the planet, Magnus's lackey Sentinel Prime scanned common Earth vehicles so as not to draw too much attention to them. A snowplow and a missile truck. Though I can't deny that this stocky, robust alt mode suits a bot of such high command. Done in four shades of blue, dark, pale, bright, and an aqua hue for the translucent plastic, you also have spots of black, yellow, red, as well as a few metallic paint apps here and there. It's not the G1 template, but they are the colours commonly associated with those who bear the Ultra Magnus title. And the amount of moulded detailing is surprisingly high for an animated figure. Still nowhere near the level of the movie toys, but there's plenty of it. You know what else he has plenty of? Armament. The main launchers can tilt up and down at three points, though sadly the assembly doesn't turn. On the sides are tabs that slide up, then forward, revealing twin blasters. Open up the cab to deploy triple barreled guns, complete with sliding tabs to extend or attract said barrels. Finally, the headlight slash front bumper pieces flip out to reveal tiny Gatling guns. I'm glad they're all manual gimmicks as opposed to spring-loaded, so that nothing annoyingly activates on its own. Pushing this button on the left activates lights and sounds within the main launchers. Magnus's transformation is much more complex than Megatron's. Locking or unlocking each shoulder results in the transformation sound effect. For the record, those cab halves fold up on incredibly stiff hinges. Needless to say, it's a royal pain. Aside from similar head designs, Animated Magnus bears no real resemblance to his G1 counterpart. He's more or less his own bot and all the cooler for it. He is, appropriately, powerful and heroic looking, with the broad chest, stocky shoulders, and boots. Some have complained that the shoulders are set too far back, and should be in line with the main body. It's... odd, I'll grant you that. But from the front, you can't tell, honestly. Magnus has 19 points of articulation. Like Beast Wars Tigerhawk, he's missing more commonplace joints, like wrist and waist rotation. Still, at least he isn't back heavy like the Vokka Missary, or animated Megatron for that matter. All weapons still deploy, even the main launchers can rest on his shoulders. Of course Magnus also comes with his hammer stored in the back of the truck. Pull up its head and it expands. He can grip the handle above or below the hinge in which it folds out though there is a tab on the upper half that plugs into his palm. I wish the shoulders were on slightly stronger ratchets, so they could support the weight better. Otherwise he wields it just fine. Pushing the Elite Guard symbol on his chest activates three phrases, not by Jeff Bennett who voiced him in the show, but from a good sound alike I have to say. So how did Season 3 work out for you? And yes, his head moves as if he's talking. Like Megatron before him, the headmaster that comes with leader Bulkhead can plug on top, though the lights and sounds are unaffected. Not to mention, this never actually happened to Magnus in the show. Sentinel wasn't so lucky. Similar to Tigerhawk, animated Ultra Magnus is a fantastic looking figure that's positively armed to the teeth. The shoulders need some work, but that's it for major complaints. 
They did a repaint in G1 Roadbusters colors, yet they kept the head, as well as the translucent plastic, the same deco as the original. Like he's wearing clothing or something. Yeah, I'll stick with the original, thank you. Thank you.